Hey guys and welcome. In the previous video I talked about how we can obtain an IMP file for the UEL subroutine. In this part I'm going to talk about the Fortran coding. So the main equation for static analysis is as follows, in which we have to uh, obtain the delta u for uh, our uh, problem. Abacus takes care of the uh, solving procedure, but we have to uh, define the stiffness matrix and we have to define the internal force vector. The stiffness matrix is going to be called the A matrix and the internal force vector is going to be called the right hand side or in short RHS vector. So for any problem we have to assume an element. I've assumed a four node element with four integration points and uh, their uh, shape function is as follows. R and S are representative of the uh, natural coordinations. And we have to use the following equation to obtain the stiffness matrix. But we cannot use the integration uh, scheme uh, straightforwardly. So we have to use the gauss lojean numerical uh, integration scheme and uh, this is called the full integration uh, procedure. Uh, in this case, I'm going to model a 2D element so uh, we can convert the uh, volume integration into surface integration and uh, we can uh, assume a a constant uh, thickness for the element which is going to be called T. So what is our procedure? First we are going to calculate the shape function and their derivatives. Next we are going to calculate the Jacobian matrix and its determinant. This is because we are using the natural coordination instead of general coordination. Next we are going to obtain the beam matrix which is going to lead us to the stiffness matrix. Finally, we are going to determine the internal force vector using the internal stresses. This procedure is common for most of the analyses. However, uh, for analyses containing plasticity or fracture, uh, this is going to be more complex and uh, Arduous. Before we continue, I'm going to show some uh, extra functions that I'm going to use in my UEL subroutine. First is the shape function subroutine. If we pay attention to the numbering of the integration points, we can see that uh, if we assume the R and S natural coordinates uh, at the middle of the surface, the integration point number 1 and 3 have positive R, integration points number 2 and 4 have negative R, and so on. I've implemented these coordinates in the um, data set. Uh, since we are using the natural coordinations, the maximum value would be 1, and the minimum value sh should be minus 1. At the next step, I'm going to calculate the shame functions and their derivatives with respect to R and S. At the next step, we are going to calculate the Jacobian matrix, its inverse and determinant. We can calculate the Jacobian matrix using the coordinates multiplied by the shape functions derivatives uh, with this highlighted lines and uh, we can calculate the determinant of the Jacobian matrix followed by the inverse of the Jacobian matrix. Note that we are uh, modeling a 2D element 
Therefore, the Jacobian matrix would be a 2 by 2 matrix. Next, we are going to calculate the uh, B matrix using B matrix subroutine. First, I'm going to transfer the coordinates uh, from the natural system to the general system using uh, this line and then I'm going to uh, set those derivation in the right order for the uh, B matrix and uh, calculate the transpose of the B matrix using the highlighted area. At last I'm going to uh, input uh, some extra functions uh, for calculating the strain increments. Since Abacus provides us with the increment of the displacements, we can uh, calculate the increment of the uh, strains using uh, these highlighted lines. This is simply the multiplication of BMAT and the uh, increment of the displacement. Note that we need uh, some extra functions to store the data to be used for the next increment. So I've created an extra function called stateVar to copy the data in and out of the uh, increments. This function has two purposes. First, it copies the data from the previous increment to the current increment and the next is that when our calculations are over, it can be used to store the data to be used for the next increment. Remember that this whole process has to be repeated for every integration point. Continuing with the UEL subroutine. As I said before, we have to use the UMAT subroutine to visualize our outputs. So I've created a module to transfer the data in and out of the uh, UEL subroutine. First, we are going to set the right hand side vector A matrix and the C or material matrix to zero. Next, uh, we are going to input the uh, elastic properties of the material and set up the C matrix uh, for that purpose. Next, we are going to use a do loop uh, for our uh, integration procedure. Since we have uh, four uh, integration points, uh, this uh, do loop would be 1, 2, 4. Uh, first, we are going to call the shape functions. Next, we are going to calculate the Jacobian matrix, its inverse and determinant. Next, we are going to call the B matrix to uh, give us the B mat at the end and its transpose. Next, we are going to save some data to show the results and uh, save them uh, for the next increment or store them for the next step. In this case, I'm going to use the state var uh, function uh, and I'm going to save the data to uh, seek uh, one vector, which is going to be transported to the UMAT subroutine. Next, I'm going to call the strain ink to produce the uh, increment of the strain vector and use that uh, to uh, obtain the uh, material point stresses. And uh, with a simple uh, multiplication, I'm going to obtain the internal force vector and with a do loop I'm going to uh, transport it to the right hand side vector. Next uh, I'm going to calculate the 
stiffness matrix using uh, do loops first I'm going to simplify the procedure uh, with an extra matrix called db and use that db to obtain the a matrix at last I'm going to uh, set the stresses to their right order and uh, use that uh, stresses to show the results with uh, the help of uh, seek out uh, or my module remember that it's crucial to store the data so we have to use the state var uh, function to store the data to s uh, to be used for the next increment at last, I'm going to copy my extra functions to the end of my file. Continuing with the UMAS subroutine, we have to uh, put the use K visual at the start of the subroutine, and um, we are going to use an indicator for the number of elements. If you recall, uh, I said that uh, we have a dummy element or decoy element uh, and Abacus uses uh, that numbering for uh, those elements. So we have to use an indicator in that case and we are going to store the uh, seek out vector in the state where's uh, vector which is going to be called by Yuma subroutine in the visualization module. This concludes our UEL subroutine. Now I'm going to uh, run this subroutine by Abacus and see the results. To run the job using the UEL subroutine, first I'm going to open the Abacus command. And then I'm going to change the working directory to my current directory and use the following commands. As you can see, Abacus runs the a following command now that the job has been completed we can see the results for that purpose I'm going to open Abacus CAE first I'm going to change the working directory and I'm going to open the ODB as you can see, the results are saved in the state files. I've only targeted the uh, stresses, therefore I'm going to have only four state Vs or four stresses. To compare the results, I've already run a simulation uh, for this uh, problem using the Abacus solver, which I'm going to show in the next step. The job shown on the right side is the job uh, done by Abacus. So I'm going to uh, first convert the uh, tension. Uh, as you can see, the results are completely the same. And I'm going to compare the shear stresses. And for that purpose, I'm going to see the S12 for the uh, job 2 and you can see that the results are the same. This concludes our video. If you find this video useful, please support me by liking and subscribing to my channel. Take care.